Cats was their big song, right? It was fun. I mean, if you like Perry's voice, yeah. Porno for Pyros was pretty good. But they did two albums in six years and then broke up. So I thought, I mean, they've reconnected over the years, but I think a farewell tour is funny. That That's funny to me. It's called Horns, Thorns, and Halos, the Porno for Pyros farewell tour. And as of now, they're not coming here. If you're a big fan of them, you'll have to travel. But uh, they'll be in Chicago, Detroit, and Toronto in February. Uh, Jane's Addiction opened for Smashing Pumpkins last year when they were at Romo Fijo, and they were great. They were I've great. only I've only seen them one time. It was twenty some odd years. ago. They didn't ago. have Dave Navarro with them, and that see was that kind sucks, of a bummer, man. But, yeah, but it was I still mean, good. Uh, yeah. He was such an integral part of that band mm-hmm. for me. But anyway, I saw Jane's Addiction back in the day with Chili Peppers. And it was pretty good. They were good for what they do. Stephen Perkins, I, I think, is an underrated drummer. He's a, he's a very uh, talented kind of groove drummer. He's got a lot of interesting ways to play. Um, and so I, I think that probably contributed... A great deal to that sound, but I think Dave Navarro's awesome too. So, uh, it's it's not uh, obviously porno for pyros wasn't Dave Navarro, but I think it's the four original guys. I think it's Peter Di Stefano and Martin Lenoble, and then Perry and Steven. But I just kind of chuckled because I thought farewell tour because Dave Navarro apparently has like long COVID because they were gonna do more Jane's shows, and Dave Navarro was like, "I'm not, when you saw him." Dave Navarro was out because he's had long COVID. Like, mm-hmm. to this day, Dave Navarro talks about, like, I still can barely remember some things. And so he has a, he's had a real hard time. But Porno for Pyros hasn't put any new music out since the Private Parts soundtrack. The mm-hmm. Howard Stern movie, that was the last Porno for Pyros song. That was 1997. But they only put out a couple albums before they broke up the first time. But the song's good. It's called Aqua. It's out there. And then uh, a handful of songs, I guess, to to tour with, and and that'll be it. A couple of minutes away here, I have another $1,000 for you to win. Uh, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie, today and tomorrow are the last two days to grab some of that money. Cavs are off tonight. They beat the Portland Trailblazers uh, last night, they'll be back at home tomorrow night to play the Detroit Pistons. And uh, a sad day in uh, the world of cannabis. You know, here in Ohio, there's been so much to crow about what with uh, the marijuana decriminalization, whatever it is. It's been decriminalized for a while. But um, inexplicably, maybe he just figures he's getting too old or whatever, but uh, Snoop Dogg has said he's giving up weed. He said giving up smoke. Is he giving up, is he just going to edibles and not smoking anymore? I mean, he said he's cutting out his habit. Okay. Maybe you're right. Maybe this is a semantic thing. Right. I'm well, giving I mean, up you smoking. You are smoking things, so maybe Yes, you are putting smoke in your lungs. Maybe he's going to vape it. Or maybe he's going to uh, eat it and still consume marijuana, just not through... Smoke, but I—I I mean, who is granted? You have to hand, you have to hand it to Snoop Dogg for the career he's had to go. And I know we've had arguments on this show. Pound Cake thinks that Snoop Dogg's bars are whack. They are, but and a lot of people agree with you on that. But public perception of Snoop Dogg—I mean, to be able to transition from what he was thirty years ago to like a cuddly pitch man for everything now. I don't know what Snoop Dogg turns down when he's offered commercials and things. It doesn't seem like much. I mean, you might as well make your money while you can. But uh, the public persona of marijuana use is embodied in Snoop Dogg. That's what people think. Yeah, so I don't know what Snoop Dogg is without weed. If that's what he means, he's given it up. You could be right that he's just giving up smoking. Maybe it's an April Fool's joke, 
and he's just I mean, doing a lot it of in people, November that was the to joke, really throw people off. <laughs> that was the joke people were making. They were telling him, this is not April Fool's. He said that being a grandfather has changed him in a lot of ways. The main way is being concerned with how I live, how I move, the kind of people I'm associated with, because I want to see my grandkids grow old. And so he is, I guess, taking precautionary steps. Snoop Dogg is my age, I think. I think he and I are about the same age. I'm 52, and he's 52 as well. Snoop Dogg is actually about four months younger than me. And he says that he's uh, he's giving it up. Uh, about a year ago, I don't there was it a, when I see it, Snoop. Yeah, about a year ago, there was a, a story that went around. You know, he and Ed Sheeran were getting high, and Ed Sheeran said that um, he got so high with Snoop Dogg uh, that he could barely see. He, he temporarily lost his sight. <laughs> Think about that. I don't because Snoop mm. smokes are the best of them. I mean, a guy like Willie Nelson still smokes, and um, you know what? I don't want to get that high. <laughs> like, where you can't see. Like, I would take a puff. Like, it's Snoop Dogg. Like, yeah, you. I feel like it's proper manners to s smoke a blunt with Snoop Dogg. Yeah. A blunt or take a couple puffs. But Snoop Dogg is a professional. Like, you're, you're not going to outsmoke Snoop Dogg. You don't have to, like, smoke in front of him to look cool, like, trying to, like, hang with him. I know I can't hang with Snoop Dogg. I'd be like, hey, I'll hit that, mm -hmm. and then I'll pass it. But... Ain't nobody trying to get high with Snoop Dogg. His high, just like I was talking about money earlier. My $200 feels very different to a, another man's $200. His weed feels a whole lot different than my weed. That's heavy weed. That's, yeah. that's a different type of weed. Smoke weed every day. Well, listen, uh, maybe. What happened to Snoop Lion? Remember Snoop Lion? Well, it was just for that one little album, I believe. Was it? Yeah. Maybe he should get maybe, album. maybe he should uh, convene with Martha Stewart again. You know, she just said she canceled Thanksgiving. That's what I bet this is. You think it is? is he's gonna be like, yeah, I'm not smoking weed. I'm making weed and brownies, and like he's gonna do like a whole edible thing with Martha Stewart. He's gonna st he's turkey. Gonna, and he's stuff. gonna stuff a turkey with mm -hmm. ganja. Yep. Or stuffing with pot or maybe something. he's this turkey can smoke it <laughs> maybe he's releasing a line of maybe he's going to be soup dog and he's releasing a line of soups all right <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that's very likely <laughs> well we didn't think he was going to give up weed either no, so it's all real the and anything's on the table the world's completely off its axis <laughs> dogs and cats living together i don't know man now that pot's legal in ohio i don't feel any different well, how did you think you were going to feel? I don't know. I just thought that the, the streets would just be a lot brighter. Everyone's just like... It already so smelled like weed so everywhere. I know. I just feel like people would be... There would be like flash mobs everywhere and everyone's well, really happy. Well, it's not out in like stores yet. It's also not 2010. Flash mobs? Yeah. I just I just thought it would be, you know, a happier place. And I don't feel no it's different. still November. It gets dark at 4 Yeah, no, Yeah, you know, November you know? in the Midwest. Yeah. Holy cow. Let me give you this money. It's $1,000 from the Buzzard Bookie today and tomorrow. Last handful of keywords. So I hope you win. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Dollar. That's dollar. Enter it now at WMMS.com. And smoke me when I die. And if anyone don't like it, just look up in the eyes. I didn't come here and I ain't leaving, so don't sit around and cry. Just roll me up and smoke me when I die. Now you won't see no sad and teary eyes. When I get my wings and it's my time to fly. And tell them there's a party come on by. Now just roll me up and smoke me when I die. Roll me up and smoke me when I die. And if anyone don't like it, they just look them in the eye. I didn't come here and I ain't leaving, so don't sit around and cry. Now just roll me up and smoke me when I die. Maybe Snoop knows something that we don't know. Like maybe he's um, 
Maybe he's terminally ill. Maybe... I don't know. I think Soup Dog is a good idea, though. I hope that he uh, goes that way. I think that would be a great thing for him to move into. What is this sexual proclivities you sent me? You sent me a clip of a guy talking about sexual proclivities. What did I send you? I remember... Some Australian guy oh. sent me a link to this guy. Well, yeah, so, okay. It just takes a weird turn. So he's, he's because talking he about... starts talking about something else. Yeah, he goes from, into a very different place. Like, you would never guess. He's talking about how people's sexual proclivities are like no nobody else's business. Like, it's not a big deal so why are people so worried about it and then he goes what we should be worried about what we should be worried about is not anything you would think this direction it would go this in. was a news conference on about what you just got to watch it and then okay well i'll show it here i mean you know people are entitled to their sexual proclivities you know i mean let there be a thousand blossoms bloom as far as i'm concerned you know, but i ain't spending any time on it because in the meantime, every three months, a person is torn to pieces by a crocodile in North Queensland. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, his face goes dark and he, he gets, gets so real... serious. But I, 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 I love the context of this. Like, it's a I, press I don't conference really... where he's, he goes from sexual proclivities to people getting torn apart by crocodiles. Yeah, he's, and I think it's one of those things where, like, let people live their lives, let a thousand blossoms bloom. And what was, But, you know, what we need to worry about is how crocodiles are killing people in North Queensland. And I, I like a guy that's getting to a real problem. He's not worried about what people do in the privacy of their own home. He is worried about people getting torn to shreds. By so this might be an older clip. They were passing yeah. gay marriage in Australia at yeah. the time, and he was asked his opinion. Right. Think people should be allowed to get married. And he was like, hey, I got no problem with that. We should be talking about people getting torn <laughs> apart. Yeah. Like crocodiles. You know, people are entitled to their sexual proclivities. You know, I mean, let there be a thousand blossoms bloom as far as I'm concerned. You know, but I ain't spending any time on it because in the meantime, every three months, a person is torn to pieces by a crocodile in North Queensland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way his face changes is the best part. I really did just like, got dark. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Is, it, is that like bipolar or something or like split personality disorder? He looks like the guy from, uh, what's that movie where it's called Split? <laughs> the split personality James McAvoy. Oh, yeah. It's literally called Split. He looks like that guy. No, I think this guy was probably asked, well, the, the, the context of it is they were talking about gay marriage and then somehow he pivoted to people being eaten by crocodiles there in North Queensland. He didn't want to go off track. I guess not. Well, he's got a, a more concerning thing. He's like, the, the people and their sexual proclivities is, is you know, oh, let them do it. That's, that's not a concern. Crocodiles, that's a concern. That's what, something we should all be worried about. Sir, are you concerned about gay people being torn apart by crocodiles? <laughs> yes. Every three months. What a schedule, too. Yeah, every three months. Every three months. Due. People are eaten by crocodiles. Let's try and get that down to once every six months. And then before you know it, it's going to be once a year, and then no one's going to get ripped apart by any crocodiles. Sir, how That's do you feel about gay in. couples with crocodiles as pets? Hey, you're asking <laughs> to get ripped apart <laughs> every three crocodiles months. crocodiles as pets. What's that? I said there's people that do have crocodiles as pets, especially in Florida. Oh, God. Every so often they'll... they'll Those are alligators. Every so often they'll get into know. some guy's apartment in Manhattan, and he's got a giant alligator mm -hmm. in his living room. They're like... They got to haul the thing out of the window like they're dropping a baby grand piano out of the street. It's wild. I've got to take a break. Uh, again, if you want to send me a text, 35192 to do that. AlanCoxShow.com for everything else. And you can listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Rover's Morning Glory. Charlie doesn't wash his hands after using the bathroom. What about your girlfriend? Does she wash her hands? She only pees she twice, two to three times a day. She doesn't consume enough water. Is pee, is it like dark yellow? Oh, dark, dude, or orange Ooh. sap. Oh, that's not, that's not <laughs> good. Maple yeah. syrup. You smell that like throughout the whole house, whole house when she pees? Yeah. Rover's Morning Glory. Three days on 100.7 WMMS and 24-7 on our free iHeartRadio app. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer.